In the Hippolytus, Euripides presents the tragic nature of love. Aphrodite, the ancient Greek goddess of love, is the first character to appear on stage. She gives a soliloquy in which she informs the audience that she will avenge herself upon Hippolytus because he does not revere her. She accomplishes her design by making Hippolytus's stepmother, Phaedra, fall in love with him. Phaedra commits suicide and accuses Hippolytus of raping her. Theseus, Hippolytus's father and Phaedra's husband, believes her deathbed confession and curses Hippolytus, invoking Poseidon to kill Hippolytus. Poseidon grants Theseus's wish. The god sends a bull from the ocean that startles Hippolytus's horses. Hippolytus falls from his chariot and dies. All of the characters blame Aphrodite, a symbol of love, as the culprit of the tragedy. Characters describe love as madness or a bane sent from the gods, not a blessing. Phaedra desperately tries to rid herself of her love for Hippolytus, but cannot. No one desires to be ill, and one will try every measure to cure themselves of a disease, but sometimes the disease is incurable, so too in the case of love. Instead of receiving dishonor after her death, Phaedra resolves to destroy Hippolytus. Like Medea, she too feels like a rejected lover. There is an ancient Greek term that explains why people become angry and violent towards those whom they most love. The term is philos a philos. The concept explains that the degree of hatred that arises for an individual directly corresponds to the degree of love that has been thwarted. Like pain and pleasure, love and hate are inseparably linked. Thus, Euripides admonishes us of the dangers of intense romantic passions, and extols the Aristotelian golden mean as a guiding principle to attaining the best life. The following are a few of the quotes from this play that I found particularly interesting. To be in love is at once great pleasure and great pain. We know and understand what is noble, but do not bring it to completion. Some fail from laziness, others because they give precedence to some other pleasure than being honorable. Aphrodite, if she streams upon us in great force, cannot be endured. Against those who yield to her demands, she comes in mildness, but the one whom she finds to be high and proud, such a one she takes and mistreats ever so badly. Oh, would that the race of men could curse the gods! I see the gates of the underworld. Man's life is a shifting thing, ever unstable. <laughs>